A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. We hear about animal species becoming endangered or extinct seemingly every week. But what about mass extinction? The Earth has survived a number of mass extinctions, and the key to understanding the next one may lie in the fossil record. Michael Benton is a paleontologist and professor of Earth Sciences at University of Bristol, and today he shares insights into the potential effects of climate change on future mass extinction. In paleontology, we don't just find fossils. We also care about evolution and diversification, how groups have become diverse, how groups go extinct. And at the moment, we are crucially concerned about extinction. So how do you connect between these two positions? Because, of course, we have to think about these points. The first approach that we use is to look at history. We have recent history recorded of extinction. So many of you will be familiar with the extinct bird called the dodo. The first record of dodos was in 1598, when seamen reported they had seen this bird. They could go on the island and catch it very easily and eat it. And within 60 years, it was extinct. One per day, 100 per day. Fossil data allows us to calculate what would be the normal rate of extinction. Species do go extinct. So I want to look at two other topics briefly. One is risk. And so one of the questions we would have, estimating the total numbers, is one thing. We have learned that we are impacting life harder than we should be. Human activity is causing extinction. What about risk? It's easy to say, of course, the dodo was stupid, it lived on one island, it just stood around and allowed itself to be uh, hit on the head. To an extent. We worry about elephants, we worry about pandas, we worry about many individual species. Many of those have high risk factors. So, for example, an elephant is very large. This means they need a lot of food, they need a lot of territory uh, to walk around. Uh, and so it's much harder to keep a sufficiently large population of elephants breeding and successfully in the wild. We don't need to worry about rats, for example. They're small and there's lots of them. So body size is one risk factor. What about the panda? As you know, they are eating bamboo without the real ability to consume it properly. If that food supply disappears, they're stuck. Restricted diet is a problem. If you live in only a very small geographic area, rather than over the whole world, you are at risk medium-sized or small, so risk is something we can determine from the present day, but also we can test when we look at mass extinctions in the past. So this is where we come back to paleontology, because I think most people here know that the end of the dinosaurs was marked by a mass extinction. Many uh, millions or thousands of species died out rather rapidly. The cause of that extinction was largely the impact of a meteorite, a huge asteroid, uh, maybe 10 kilometers across, and the model for extinction of the dinosaurs 66 million years ago was the asteroid hit the Earth. This is unpredictable when this may happen or not. Um, it, it penetrated into the crust, it, uh, it vaporized, and all of that rock of the asteroid plus the crust that it had penetrated turned into rocks and dust, mainly dust. This was thrown up high into the atmosphere and went all around the Earth, blacking out the sun, and so that you get two effects there, no light, no heat. So there was a cessation of photosynthesis, the plants died, there was darkness and cold, so this was not good for dinosaurs and other groups that enjoyed the warm climates, and so you get extinction. And you might think, of course, what do we learn from this? Yes, that's all very well, but that's not something we can do anything about, really. And indeed, asteroids do come close to the Earth from time to time. We can't really prepare. But the key point is that the other mass extinctions in the history of life were not caused by impact. They were caused by climate change. Immediately, you can see now how that matters. At the end of the Permian period, 250 million years ago, there was another major extinction. This was before the dinosaurs. Uh, and the sequence of events was that massive volcanoes erupted in Russia. 
They were so huge that they poured out enormous amounts of lava, of course, but more importantly, they poured out gases into the atmosphere, including carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is, is famous uh, as a greenhouse gas, meaning it heats the atmosphere. We have evidence that around the equator, ocean temperatures warmed up uh, to 40 degrees plus. So this is like a very warm shower. You might think that's okay, maybe for 10 minutes, but not for day after day after day. So we learn from that that carbon dioxide and global warming can cause extinction, whatever the cause of that carbon dioxide, whether it comes from volcanoes or human activity. So we've learned three things that we can illustrate and use for predicting into the future what may happen to life. Um, we've learned that we can calculate the rate of extinction by looking at historical extinctions. Secondly, we've learned something about risk, which species are most at risk of extinction. And thirdly, we've learned that the whole history of the Earth records a rich record of, of climate change. We don't need to do experiments. We don't need to imagine what, what, what a world would be like without the polar ice caps. It has existed, <clears throat> and we can study it. So to conclude, my aim has not been simply to spread doom and gloom, um, but to, to indicate that we have the power to change. And we have to ask the right questions about what we should do. And in order to decide what we should do, uh, we need to use evidence. And there's some great evidence comes from the history of the Earth and the history of life. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded in Thessaloniki, Greece. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Thessaloniki. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.